Hey everybody, and what's happening today? It is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Um, after lunch, where I am, I don't know what, it, what it's like for you guys. Um, I have been uh, traveling and all over the place, and I'm back home now, and I've been trying to get some work done around this place. Um, trying to stay motivated in the winter months can be a challenge. I don't know what it's like for you guys, but for me, I try and look at winter as almost preparation for spring and summer, knowing that I'm gonna have this yard work to do. Uh, Melissa's gonna have a garden to plant, which I'll have to get a rototiller for, and really just trying to think of the things that are gonna have, it, uh, have to happen in the, the new season coming up here in spring and summer. Uh, we had nearly summer-like conditions last week, um, and it's dipped down below zero and we're getting snow right now. Um, and as you guys are logging on, hello to everybody who's joining us right now. Uh, so the weather has turned. I'm in my garage on what is a snowy uh, day and I'm thinking about spring and I'm thinking about summer and I'm thinking about, um, they actually say it's gonna be a longer uh, summer than usual because uh, April's supposed to be really hot here. Um, the problem with that can be, well, last year, if you guys recall, Canada had a crazy amount of forest fires and a little bit worried about that happening again this year too. We didn't have as much snow as they were hoping and it's gonna be unseasonably warm. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but I am uh, really looking forward to the season when I can take some of my old cars out and get them on the road. So to give you guys a bit of an update and hello to everybody who's joining us right now. Um, I wanted to do this video because <coughs> excuse me, pardon me. Uh, I've probably been raising the dust in the garage because I was sweeping and uh, cleaning and stuff around here. Danny Keene says, can't be live. If I can't be live right now, Danny Keene, then how am I saying your name as you pop up? Anyways, I am live. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try and see the comments at the same time. It's been a while since I've actually done a live feed with you guys. I've just been so busy. Um, as you'll see in future videos that are coming out, uh, hello back at you. <laughs> as you start seeing in future videos that will be coming out in the next little while, I've been traveling all over the place. And um, maybe I was in your neck of the woods and you didn't, didn't know it. Uh, some people saw on my Facebook uh, that I was in Tulsa and uh, there will be some more uh, Tulsa trips down the road here. So uh, next month, I think we have some more Tulsa videos that'll be coming out. And <coughs> anyway, just having, having fun and uh, enjoying life, because really that's what you gotta do. That's what this is all about, right? Um, 380 Motorsport and Custom is on. Well, that's great, uh, because uh, Shane and his lovely wife, Barbara, the ones that did the work on the Alpha, which we're gonna be talking about here. Um, if you wanna see the work that they did, you can go to their channel. Uh, very happy with the work that they did, and honestly, they did not charge enough. Um, we gave them a little bit extra, but they are very fair, wonderful people, so thank you guys so much. Um, for working on the car. So uh, let me, we're gonna do the walk around of the car first. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll sit back down again right where I am and we'll chat for a little bit. It's been a while since I've done a live feed. So here, let me take this camera with me <laughs> and I'm gonna flip it around and try to point it at something more interesting. Oh gosh, they, they changed how this is all set up. There we go. My dirty, this is what the roads are doing to my car right now, getting all dirty. This is a little scooter we got for um, Abby Old to scoot around on last year. So we have that. A little Porsche project, well, that uh, car doesn't really need anything now. It's actually running and driving great and we'll be going up, on, uh, up for auction pretty soon here. And here we go. The Alfa Romeo. So um, this Alfa Romeo, is a 1965 Julia Spider. Last time you guys saw this car in my garage, it had a smushed front fender and needed some work. And I am uh, happy to say that the uh, folks over at 380 Custom Motorsport did a great job getting that uh, front nose on there. I've got it primed and in, but you can't really even see where the welds were. Um, it really blended nicely, that nose is back on. So it actually looks like a car again. And better than that, better than it just looking like a car, it does car-like stuff. Like the doors on both sides open and close, the door gap is good. Um, you know, the, the car is essentially um, at a stage where it won't be uh, that challenging for somebody to take it the rest of the way. So uh, it's come a long way from where it was before. 
and uh, they did a really good. Oh, there we go. I uh, it cut out for a second there. Sorry about that. Anyway, they did a fantastic job. Um, when you think about what that car looked like before, it is square, it is measured, it is the proper length, um, and it's looking really, really nice. So there we go. The car is good. I've got new bumpers for it, front and back, and um, it's nearly there. So what is happening with this car? It has sold. Uh, I'm gonna flip this around, actually. So uh, you might be asking, well, Alex, why on earth would you start working on a car and then decide to uh, not finish or go ahead with it? Uh, the reason for that is um, I, it, it's a neat car and I really like it. As you can see, I'm a little overloaded with cars right now. Our Volkswagen bus, I don't know if you guys remember, like two years ago, we had a Volkswagen camper bus. Are you guys still with me? I can't tell if, uh, if this thing is still working or not. I can't see the comments anyway. I'll just keep talking as though you are. <laughs> um, we had a Volkswagen um, uh, Westphalia, yellow one, and we redid the interior in it. And uh, I drove it, we got the motor, we had a replacement motor put in and it only lasted like a week. And unfortunately that motor blew and now, um, uh, it's back. It's been at that shop for about a year and a half now while they fix the transmission and the engine and it's supposed to be done in the next week or so, which means that that vehicle is going to be coming home, which means that one of these vehicles had to go right away. Um, and uh, yeah, so the Alpha was the sacrificial lamb. It's not registered uh, or it's not insured right now. So it's just a project vehicle and it's um, it was time for it to go. So anyway, the Alpha has sold. The guy is picking it up on Saturday um, and he will take it the next uh, next bit of the way that it needs to go. So that was, uh, I think, a car well saved, a nice collaboration with another YouTube channel and, um, you know, so, some experience for, for Shane. I'm sure that he would, maybe he would rather not have had <laughs> working on that thing. I think it gave us some grief, but he did a fantastic job. And honestly, um, if I if I only had that one car, if I only had the Alpha, of course I would keep it and, and get it going and all that stuff, but uh, I've just got too much on the go right now. So my mission this year was to try and consolidate vehicles. That's, that's the goal right now. Um, and I won't talk uh, entirely all about cars. Uh, I'll wrap this up in a couple minutes here, but um, I kind of just want to get down to a few really special cars and then the excess stuff can go. So. Um, the Volkswagen bus is one that I really like and I wanted to, to keep and so because that's going to need paint and bodywork I've got to put my efforts into that vehicle rather than the Alpha and so off it goes. Um, Julie, are you asking us if the fruit trees um, have fruit starting? No, we're still, it's very wintry here right now. Um, there's kind of the promise of spring in the air. Last week was really warm. Uh, it was 15 degrees Celsius. Not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it was nice. Um, and you can kind of sense that spring is rolling around, like the grass was starting to green up a little bit. Uh, but now we've dipped down below zero for another week here and it is going to be uh, chilly. And uh, zero Celsius, I should say. It's going to be a little bit chilly. Um, Great Northern 70 says, will you be doing any house clearouts in the future? Well, that depends on what comes my way. Uh, I have been waiting right now for um, uh, basically a a few things to, to come around. I still don't know what's happening with this TV show and they're supposed to have the exclusive rights to me doing house clearouts. Um, I'm allowed to do them, uh, but I can't label them as being like a hoarded property or things like that if they are because of my contract. So I've been kind of avoiding doing them almost for that reason because I'm contractually obligated to do them professionally for um, a streaming service. But if they don't come around and do a show, I'm just gonna, I kind of have to live life and, and do my thing. Um, I did go look at a couple houses that needed to be cleared out. One, I drove an hour and a half out of town. It was a really cold week. It was like minus 45 Fahrenheit or Celsius, no matter which way you swing it. Um, they had sold off pretty much anything that had value in the home and left behind a bunch of junky, broken and stained furniture and mattresses and wanted me to basically clear their house. Not even for free. They wanted me to pay the money to clear their house and there was nothing really for me to sell. So. That was the last place that kind of came my way in terms of a house clear out. Um, and there just wasn't enough to justify doing it. Um, Stephanie says, how many cars do you have? Too many. I don't know. I'm hoping to have less here soon. Um, 
But there's, you know, we have maybe half a dozen classic cars, uh, probably about six classic cars. And um, that's, that's a couple too many. So we're starting to, to thin things out a little bit around here, thin the herd out of it. Um, yeah, so in terms of house clear outs, I, I don't know what's around the corner for me. I am still looking for um, antiques and collectibles and estate jewelry and stuff. But quite honestly, uh, when we did the new intro to the, to the program, <laughs> when we did the new intro to the, uh, to the show, it was kind of an emphasis on more of a, a bit of renovating, a bit of travel, a bit of exploration. And that is uh, what I want to do this coming year. I want to see new places. I want to go to and meet people I've never met before. I want to hang out with cool people that I've never met before. So um, I, um, I am looking forward to what this year is going to bring in terms of adventure and travel. I'll put it that way. Um, no auctions lined up at the moment, Dave is asking. Uh, we, you know what, we actually were lining up to do an auction not that long ago. Um, we were uh, gathering stuff, we got it all over at the auction house, they were going to do an advertised sale for us, and they had a mix-up and they sold all of my stuff that uh, I put there uh, at their own auctions, not at mine, and it was all gone before I could even advertise it to anybody. So unfortunately, uh, it was a big disappointment. We had real gold and diamond earrings selling for $10 for a pair of earrings. And I kind of said like, there's no point of me doing these auction sales if, if you're gonna run it through at the wrong time. And, and we got like next to nothing for any of this stuff. And that'll tie in with another question. Somebody said, Alex, do you miss having an antique store? No, actually I don't. And part of the reason for that is that um, the economy around here anyway is really shifted. And a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the businesses that sell things that are not priority, and I'm talking about like um, grocery stores and restaurants are doing okay, but the antique shops and the, I talked to a guy that runs a business that does garage shelving and floor, uh, flooring and stuff, they've been really, really slow. Uh, the antique stores are very quiet around here. So the market's a little different right now. And some of the antiques that sold really well for me even a year or two ago, the price has shifted tremendously on it. So I have to be careful when I'm paying for things because things are not selling for as much as what they used to, which means that I can't pay as much as I used to for some stuff. Uh, for instance, even pocket watches that you used to be able to do okay on pocket watches. Um, those have really taken the nosedive off a cliff. I don't think anybody's really wearing pocket watches anymore and not too many people collecting them, uh, which is why I did that episode, I wanna say like three months ago where I traded all of my pocket watches for one nice wristwatch um, because those higher end wristwatches are, are still popular and are still selling, but some of the things are um, um, have changed. Oh, uh, some folks are saying, sorry to hear that the uh, auction didn't go as planned. That's okay. I mean, well, I mean, it sucks. <laughs> it's, it's not okay um, that it happened, but it did happen. And I just have to, you know, be a grown up about it and recognize that I've been more careful. And they've promised that when we do our next sale, that uh, they'll be better at making sure stuff goes through. Um, Chris says he's a little bit worried about the flea market season, how that's going to go. Um, I think... One thing I've noticed is that the thrift stores are really busy right now. Um, there are a ton of people out there at the thrift shops, which I find their prices are jacked right up right now. It's hard to get actually any kind of deal at the thrift store. In fact, there's a lot of videos people are putting out online about how thrift stores are asking, like they'll see the, you know, um, like Value Village will have $10 on something you peel it off and see that it was originally $5 at HomeSense or something. And so the prices aren't really all that great at thrift stores either. It's hard to get a good deal. I think what you'll find is more um, garage sales will still be popular. Um, you'll see a lot of um, interest in, in still people uh, doing clear outs like I'm doing or that I do on occasion. Uh, so I am, I'm looking forward to just kind of getting out there and seeing what else is out in the world um, and really doing some travel. I want to take some of my old cars out on the road this summer and do some road trips and go and check out some small town antique stores and thrift shops. So uh, a little bit of exploration and travel this coming year, which I think will be fun. Um, Leah, Leah says, or Lee says, the collect collectibles market is the worst they've seen in 25 years. I collect dolls and can't sell them. Uh, yeah, things have really changed a bit. And uh, Chad says, yeah, I've been seeing on eBay for sale listings um, that uh, people are having uh, challenges there. Uh, I'm just old and tired, <laughs> great name, says, uh, any more storage, that was their name. I'm not stating a fact, although I'm getting there. 
Uh, no more storage lockers. No, I probably will do a couple storage units, but they're always so sad. Like when you do a storage unit, it's always some circumstance where somebody's lost against their will, their items. And although somebody's gonna buy that stuff and we do a good job of recycling and donating and I feel like we, we make good use of the things that we find there, um, it is kind of a, a, a bit of a heavy and sad feeling to go through somebody's storage unit. And frankly, some of the ones I've cleaned out in the last little while when we do those units and it's not very often, have not been anything really good. Um, you know, somebody who might've had addiction issues and um, the stuff is in terrible shape or maybe somebody who is, um, um, maybe they didn't acquire their stuff that was in the storage unit through legal means. Um, we found that really cool electric bicycle. I don't even know if I shared that with you. We found that electric bike, that a German electric bike that would have been very expensive. You know, we bought some parts for it, got it all together, um, sold it at auction. And then the, the police seized it from the auction house because apparently it had been stolen. Even though I looked up the serial number and it wasn't on any sort of, um, like they have a website here in town where people can uh, submit their serial number for their stolen bikes. It wasn't on there, so I thought it was okay. But nope, it got seized. And so that was the best thing I found in that unit and it got taken. So there you go. Um, ended up being out money on that. So I'm, I'm a little hesitant to do some storage units. I would much prefer uh, to go to somebody's house and just select the things that I want, just be a little bit selective. And so you're gonna see a video that comes out on this weekend where I was able to go through a house that was an estate situation and I was able to look around, not buy everything, but I was able to look around in a mass amount of stuff and find some really interesting items. And so that video is coming out, I think on Saturday or Sunday, and I hope you enjoy it. It's a traditional Alex picking and searching through a house and going through boxes video that you guys usually like. It's a traditional Curiosity Inc. video. So that's coming out this weekend. Um, yeah, I wanna get out. I would love to go do some uh, barn storming or go dig through some barns. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just really gearing up for what's going to be an interesting season. Uh, Jeff says, oh, you know, we like those videos. Can't wait. Yeah, this, this weekend's video will be a really good one, I think. Um, it's, I think, 45 minutes long because I went through... I think it was three or four generations worth of stuff. It's not that they were antique collectors, they just had really old stuff going back a really long time and some neat historical items. And I'm, I'm happy to share that with you guys this weekend. So look for that video coming out this weekend. Um, as for me, what my priorities right now, basically uh, family, uh, spending time with them and going out and uh, having adventures, spending time with friends, meeting new people. Uh, and also trying to get rid of a few cars. <laughs> um, to which uh, Margolith, uh, Margolith, I'm not sure I said your name right, says, does your son, do any of your kids drive your old cars? I will let them drive them, yes, but um, certain ones over others maybe. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we've just been keeping really busy around here. And um, Oh, Chris says, maybe see if the new owners of the Pottery House will allow an update. No, I don't want to go back to that town. No, I had nothing against Provost. It's just really far away um, and um, kind of melancholy mixed emotions about that house. You know, if it was, if it was in Edmonton here, I'd probably still own that house because it was a big, beautiful old home. I would have probably renovated a bit differently if it was close to home. Uh, I would have loved to have had that home for my mom to even live in uh, so she could have a nice big garden but it was just too far away. It was about three hours from here and that's, that's a little too far to make it uh, justifiable to hang on to. Um, would love to find another property, maybe kind of like that. Uh, a lot of work and gosh, I was sick for, I was sick for probably, for probably four months after I cleared out that house. If anybody watched that series and watched the live streams that happened after it, those hoard clear outs are very hard on a person's body. Um, I was coughing up a lung for probably five or six months. Uh, how is Hans? People are asking. Hans is good. Um, and, uh, he's well. I saw him not that long ago. Went for coffee. Talked to him a couple days ago. And he seems to be doing well. Uh, the question came up. Are all these cars in the garage from clearouts? No. None of them are from clearouts that are... The only car we kept from a clearout was the Ford Escape that we got from the uh, lawyer's, uh, condo for, that had the Miata there. We kept the escape and my son, uh, Jason, is driving that. It turned out to be a pretty good vehicle. Mind you, he was at school the other day and while he was in class, somebody tried to take the catalytic converter off of his car. So now he, uh, they didn't get it off, but the exhaust is hanging down a bit. So as soon as he gets home, it's coming into the garage here and we're gonna try and mend the exhaust on it. What a, 
what a terrible thing, you know, to cut the exhaust off of a kid's, like a high school kid's car just to get, I don't know what they even get for a catalytic converter, probably like 25, 30 bucks or something. Can't be a whole lot because uh, they're not supposed to be buying them at the scrap yards. I don't know if you guys have those rules where you are, and I don't even know if it's a problem where you are, but catalytic co converter theft is an issue um, here in Edmonton. And uh, crime in general has gotten worse, I would say particularly since 2018 or so. It's, it's um, uh, not great. Um, so I went uh, and I drove past our old store and uh, this is kind of in that same vein of like, gosh, I hope they do something about the, the problems that our city is facing right now. Um, I went past our old store and it was a bit disappointing. One of the windows on the ice cream shop had been smashed out and was boarded up. The garage door looked like it had been pried open and falling off the hinges. And it just kind of had a feeling of a building that was being let down. And I think about all that work I did to that space and making it nice and making it perfect and cleaning and painting and tidying. And then you see it kind of with boarded up windows and the garage door falling off and stuff. And it, it was depressing, I'll be honest, because uh, I put a lot of love into that building. But the older I get, um, the more I realize that pretty much everything uh, is temporary in, the, in this life, um, whether it's a building, especially, did you guys watch that video where I went to that town, the, the town of, uh, in uh, Oklahoma, Fairfax? You know, that was a whole big town that's basically abandoned now. So really, it's the nothing is permanent. Um, I don't know, maybe I've got to overcome that vibe, that feeling I have. It's, it's, not, it's not like I'm thinking, well, what's the point because it's going to get trashed anyway or whatever, but it's just really... Um, trying to put my effort and resources towards more experiencing this life and experiencing life with my family and my kids um, versus just solely focusing on possessions or objects and things like that. Um, so yeah, it, it was disheartening to, to see my old store kind of uh, in a bit of shambles considering that building was only built a year and a half, two years ago. Um, but I, you know, there are things in this life and in this world which I do enjoy. So I obviously like having a couple old cars um, and, uh, but you know, all these thoughts, I had so many ambitions to, I would love to restore an old building and fix it up, um, find an old town hall and fix it or do something like that. But, uh, then you see like almost to what end, uh, are you doing this? I don't have, uh, the need to build another store right now or put a business in. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, Oh, David says, uh, good to see you. Nice to hear from you. Um, one of these days we're going to meet. Yeah, well, hope, hopefully so. <laughs> um, yeah, so, it, oh, there, I've just seen some of the comments about the Fairfax video. Good video. Uh, cool that you were here in Oklahoma. <coughs> oh, yeah, I, I spent, uh, uh, I'm in Oklahoma for a few days, and so I'll be going to the... Um, uh, to the gallery, the museum there, um, going to, I did an interview with a, uh, former race car driver. And so there's a little series tied in with that. That's going to be coming. Oh, you can't see it. all this motion. That's me hand talking like this. What you can't see all you see is a lot of shoulders. I could be baking a cake down here. That's me rolling the dough. Doesn't do much good to talk with your hands if people can't see you. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of just, I'm refocusing my energies right now. I'll be honest guys, after owning an antique store and clearing out hoarded houses and clearing out people's contents and buying stuff from estates, the, the concept of ownership of, of things really loses its flair. Um, I say that with cars stacked behind me. These are kind of investments. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I just really want to get out there and just live life and, and just have fun. Uh, Stephanie and girl says, I'd love to meet you in person. Uh, talked on the phone a couple times, missed you when you visited at Niagara Falls. Stephanie, where are you? Are you in Ontario? Cause, uh, I may make a trip out there at some point. Um, I know uh, my friend Adam wants to get together and then we have, um, some folks that are involved in, in Ontario with, uh, there's a curiosity crew page. Uh, oh, in Hamilton. Oh, you're the one that lives in Hamilton still. <laughs> Actually, uh, Stephanie, I was in Hamilton. Uh, when I worked for Target, we were doing a, uh, uh, we were getting the store ready to open there in Hamilton. And um, I had a chance to spend some time staying out there for, for, I think, two, three weeks, something like that. There was a flea market I used to like to go to, and there was a little old, I think he might have been an Italian man. And uh, if I was asking about old watches. This is my Hamilton story. 
So Hamilton is kind of like, I hate to say it, it's kind of like Canada's Detroit in a sense where it was a steel industry town and the industry kind of moved along. Uh, home of the very first Tim Hortons restaurant, um, not too far from Niagara Falls. But there's a lot of abandoned old factories and buildings and stuff like that. And so you kind of get the sense, it's like when you're not used to it, you drive through Hamilton or Detroit and you kind of go like, what happened here? Like, what, what went on? Yeah, the flea market on Barton Street, okay. So that was my impression of Hamilton was kind of like, gosh, what happened to this city? It's like a ghost town, not as bad as Fairfax, but kind of felt like it was on its way. And um, yeah, just kind of like, um, it was probably a busy happening town up until the 60s, you know, and then it changed. And now it's kind of like a lot of empty buildings and stuff. So um, I went to the uh, flea market on, uh, on Barton and um, there was uh, this, I was asking anybody have old watches and stuff and there's a little Italian man there sitting there and they said, you gotta go talk to him. And he was sitting there talking to some of his friends and he had a suitcase with him. And, he, and you, we kind of, he's like, what, what kind of watches you, I can't do an Italian accent. Am I part Italian? I don't know if I am or not. It'd probably be offensive if I did either way, but here it goes. <laughs> he's like, well, what the kind of watches you like? And I went, oh, you know, like Omega, Rolex, Patek Philippe, you know, and you know, oh, okay. And so he opens up his case and it's like every vintage high-end watch you could imagine was in there. And they were real. Um, they were like 1940s, 50s, and 60s watches, which really weren't heavily replicated or really replicated at all. They didn't start doing a lot of replica watches until the 80s, 90s, and onward. Uh, now the replicas are almost impossible to tell apart from the real ones unless you take the back off and have a good look. Um, but um, yeah, so I was flabbergasted and I don't even know if I bought a watch from him because at that time, you know, resources were a little bit uh, tight and I had to worry about, you know, things like mortgage and, and food. <laughs> but it sure was nice to see. Oh, those Sergeant Reds are on. Um, speaking of folks that have a, a, a business that's up and running, they opened up a really cool store. Uh, nice to see you guys on here. Um, oh, I'm getting some questions about the cars in the background. Yeah, so 69 Porsche, 56 Mercedes, 67 Ferrari, 2000 Porsche, and then the Alpha, which is, it's a 65 Alpha Julia Spider, which is gonna be gone on its way. I'm really just gonna try and get down to a few old cars here. Um, and then I will be set and I'm just going to enjoy them and go to car shows and maintain them and try and make them a little bit better as we go. Um, but anyway, I, I, I've always loved old cars. Um, this Mercedes that's behind me, I don't really know if I've ever really featured it in a video. Oh, Rick Levine, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, I'll tell you a story. I'm going to share a quick story about the Mercedes that's behind me. You can kind of see the tail end of it behind my head there. Um, when I was 17 years old, I'd moved to Calgary and I was going, I was uh, enrolled in film school. Uh, and during the summer I was working both on film sets as a set decorator, um, and also as a furniture mover and interior decorator, um, on the side. And, uh, oh, thank you again for the super chat, Bonnie. Um, and, uh, so I, I was moving furniture. We had to go pick up some stuff from this lady's store. She had an antique shop, ironically, um, which I thought was cool. She would import stuff from Europe and had a lot of old stuff. And somebody had bought a piece from her store. We were loading it in a truck. And across the street, anytime we had to go do a delivery from that antique shop, somebody who had a business across the street had a Mercedes 190SL. And 17 year old me who was still living at home in an apartment with my parents and uh, I had a really beat up car that I was driving around, rusty, that I was holding together with baler twine and, and duct tape and, and well wishes. Um, I really wanted a car like that and to me it's, uh, it never seemed like it was impossible, it just seemed like a, I would tell myself not now. Um, not, not that it's not going to happen and I don't abide by that. Um, that thought when somebody says, well, that's never going to happen for me. I don't believe in that. I believe that you should just say, well, maybe just not right this minute. And so it became a maybe one day car. Um, years later, this is probably about 15 years ago. I, I saw one advertised in terrible condition in a field and I went to go look at it and I, I ended up buying it, but it was so far gone. I didn't have the resources to fix it. I ended up selling it, but, but kind of like the alpha that, that's behind me, you know, uh, I ended up selling it and I, I kept that kind of maybe one day, maybe one day. And uh, I don't know if I shared that this story with anybody or not, but that Volkswagen bus I was talking about earlier, the one that I, I'm going to be fixing up and part of the reason why I'm selling the Alpha to put some money back into that. Um, 
I was driving home from uh, looking at a Mercedes 190 SL. The guy did not want to sell it. There's a shop in town that's had one in their showroom for decades. And every five years or so, I would go in and say like, you guys ready to sell? Are you ready to sell? And the, um, the price of the car, the value of the car kept going up and up and up. And so I had another visit with them and they said, no, we're not interested in selling the car. And, um, and I went, okay, that's, that's fine. And I'm driving back in the Volkswagen bus and it's in primer and sanded and not looking super hot. And I'm having my best like shaggy from Scooby-Doo moment, you know, driving back from looking at this car in my old beat up Volkswagen bus. And there is a black Mercedes 190 SL on the side of the road with the hood up, not far from my house. And uh, there's a lady standing next to it. So I thought, well, I'm gonna pull over and I'm gonna see if she needs a hand. Um, and she's like, not quite my mom's age, but close, close, closer to being parents' age than anything. And I, not to assume that she wouldn't know how to fix the car, but anybody's stranded. Sometimes it's nice to pull over. Plus it was a cool car. Um, so I pulled over and I said, do you guys need a hand? She said, no, like my husband, uh, was with us and he went to go get the trailer. He's going to pick the car up and, and bring it back because it's not running right. And uh, I said, you know what, the funny thing is, I was literally just looking at one of these cars, asking if they'd sell it. And I said, uh, I asked about the car. I said, has your husband had it for long? She said, oh yeah, he's had it probably 45 years or more. And uh, this is the first time he's driven it and, um, and it's not running right at all. And uh, I said, oh, did, did he restore it? Because it, it looked like it had been freshly restored. And she said, no, it was from a kit. And I went, well, they never really made a kit car. Uh, but what she meant was that, yeah, it was a bunch of pieces and he had put it back together like a kit. So I left my name and number with them and I got theirs and every month or two I would check in and say like, hey, just check in and it's Alex the car guy and whatever. And, and they said, yes, they would consider selling it. I went and looked at it and it was a beautiful looking car. And, uh, and then I kind of didn't hear anything for a long time. And so uh, I gave up on purchasing the car and I bought that Ferrari project car instead. It was non-running when I got it and I got that and started working on that. And I phoned them to say, thank you, I've already moved on and purchased a different vehicle. And they said, oh no, no, the car is yours, come get it. So I ended up with that too. Now when I got the car home, uh, it was not running right at all. Um, and much to their chagrin, they never even washed the car since, since it had been painted. He'd owned it 45 years. I think he was the second owner of the car, had it fully restored, had it fully restored again um, because he didn't like the way it was done before. Everything, it was a rotisserie restoration. I mean, every nut and bolt, every bit of chrome, everything was done on it. Um, really nice job. And, um, and he only had it out once and he was frustrated. And so he decided he would sell me this car. So I go to pick the car up. He says, when's the trailer coming? This is in winter, kind of like now. You know, it was cold, it was snowing a little bit. He said, when's the trailer coming for it? I said, I'm driving it home. <laughs> it's a car, I'm gonna drive it. And so uh, he said he's never even washed it, never even had it wet, and he thought I was an absolute nutcase, but I drove the car home. And uh, yeah, it struggled to get up to speed, it was missing, it didn't sound great, I got it in the garage. Uh, my friend Scott came over, who's a wonderful mechanic, by the way, and a very good friend, I've known him for years. Um, sadly, he doesn't ever wanna be on camera. He's, some people just are very shy about that stuff. He's, he's a friend of mine that I would love to get on camera, because uh, he and I would have this like almost, uh, James May, Jeremy Clarkson thing. He'd be Jeremy Clarkson. I think I'd be more the James May or, uh, anyway, um, I, I think we'd have great rapport on camera. Uh, maybe one day I'll convince him to do it with me. But he came over, we looked at the car, found out that the, the distributor was in 45 degrees off, which basically is like the brain of your car that tells your sparks when, your, your spark plugs when to ignite. Anyway, somebody put it in way wrong. So we took it out, put it back in proper, and it's been driving great ever since. So. Um, a good little car and I'm glad that I have it. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that car to me was one of those, when you are a kid, and I kinda, not that I use that as an example for my kids, but the feeling I had, I use as an example for my kids of the, don't say it's impossible, just kind of look at it like maybe the timing isn't right, right now. Um, it's just one of those things where um, if you want something bad enough, it might find its way to you. And I remember years ago, and Melissa and I have been together long enough now that I remember back when we were like quite literally almost kids, we were teenagers, and I would buy a Hemmings magazine. And uh, if you're into cars or not, maybe this will bore you or if you're not, but anyway, I'm gonna tell it anyhow. Uh, we would get a magazine and I, I'd say, 
okay, you pick a car on this page you like, and then I'll pick a car on that page that I like. Do you know, kind of like when you used, if you're old enough, you'd go through like the Sears catalog or you'd circle like the toys you want for Christmas. That was like kind of what we were doing. Doesn't mean Santa's gonna show up with that car, but you're kind of just like getting an idea of what interests you. And Melissa would always circle Aston Martin DB5s, and this is without her knowing what they were worth. She had expensive taste without even knowing it. She'd say, well, this is a pretty car, Aston Martin DB5. Oh, this is a pretty car, uh, 1960s Ferrari. And I'd say to her like, are you nuts? You know how expensive those things are? And a part of me thought, again, not that it was never gonna happen, but it seemed uh, really unrealistic. Um, and then it happened. And so, um, yeah, I guess the moral of the story there is uh, don't put limitations on yourself. Um, there's enough people in this world that will try and put limitations on you. You better not be the one to do it yourself. Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't have to dream that Melissa would find her way to me. We were already together at that point. <laughs> Melissa and I were already together. Um, uh, we've been together for a really long time now. And in fact, she's on the, the, the live feed right now. She's actually picking up our daughter from school while I'm here in the garage chatting with you. Uh, and I'm trying to remember how many years it's been, 26, 27 years, something like that, that we've kind of been seeing each other. So that feels momentous. That feels like the amount of stuff that I've put that woman through in terms of, um, somebody said that you're a little scatterbrained in terms of your thoughts or bird-brained, I think they said. And I am a little bit of a chipmunk sometimes. Um, I don't believe that I have ADD because I think I can circle back uh, to a thought and not completely move on. There are certainly times when I wonder what's wrong with me, but Melissa's put up with a lot of stuff. Um, you know, um, I don't gamble, I don't smoke, um, and I don't drink, um, other than maybe a glass of wine occasionally or something like that. Uh, but I'm not a, not a big drinker. And so my vice has always been cars and antiques and things like that. And it's been a big enough gamble, um, you know, knowing what to invest your money in when it comes to old cars or when it comes to collectibles. Um, but she's been with me there and she stuck through it and uh, kudos to her and to all the other partners out there who um, have uh, somebody crazy like me who does this kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, Rick Spector says, kids are growing up fast. Oh yes, they're growing up fast. Um, yeah, but um, <laughs> some uh, original nethead said, forget ducks, Alex keeps his cars in a row. Yeah. Anyway, I'm grateful for Melissa that she's been uh, on this journey with me and, um, and kind of okay with the whole thing. I don't think she's ever known me. I don't think Melissa's ever known me not to have an old car. I think ever since the day we've met, I think the first car I had when we met was a 64 Ford Fairlane and then I had a 64 T-Bird. Um, so there's always been some kind of old car um, in my life when she's been a part of this picture. So this is not a, this isn't a surprise to her. Um, I don't think at all. Um, and if, it, and I've said it before that any of the things that I own, I would happily sell if it meant that we were, uh, if we get, get to a spot where we need to put food on the table or um, kids needed more money for their education, we've been saving for that. So hopefully we won't need to worry about that. But those priorities will always be first. Um, my wife, my kids, my family are always number one priority and this stuff is just excess on top of that. So um, things will come and go. Um, so I'm not sad to see some stuff go. Um, I should probably do a little Q&A because we haven't really done too much of that in a while. And I'll see if I can uh, get the comments to pop up here because they're kind of a little hit and miss. Uh, there we go. Uh, somebody said, T-Bird, that was a tight fit to sit in, wasn't it? Um, no, 64 T-Bird is what I had, and it had a swing away steering wheel, and it was quite comfortable. I ended up with a 59 T-Bird later on, and that, we had the seats reupholstered, and they did them to the foam too thick, and then I couldn't fit. The steering wheel was like right here at the chest, and it was awkward. Um, kind of like the old Corvettes, I can't uh, comfortably fit in an early 60s or 50s Corvette. It just can't happen for me. I'm six foot two. Um, just too small of a car for me, which is insane because the car, the length of the car is huge. The width of the car is huge. I fit better in an English Austin Mini than I do in a 57 or eight Corvette. I don't know what, what the deal is with that, but I just, I just can't. Um, what's my favorite classic car? I think, um, my favorite classic car, um, I have a little red Alfa Romeo, which isn't here right now. And right now that's my current favorite. It's not pretentious. 
Um, it doesn't have a giant big engine in it. It's just a cool looking thing. I really enjoy it. It's uh, called a Sprint Special. Um, I like it. It's like kind of sitting, it's like uh, the, the leather and it's nice. So it, um, yeah, it, it's just a nice vehicle to drive around in. Um, DH says they've had many minis, love them. Yeah, I, I don't mind the mini. It did give me that sense. The only other vehicle I've driven that made me feel a little bit unsafe is a Volkswagen bus because you're sitting right at the windshield basically. So there is no crumple zone. You are the crumple zone in a vehicle like that. Um, same thing with the mini. There's a tiny little engine sideways in front of you, but other than that, there's not much in front of you. Um, and you kind of feel it. <laughs> Um, I may, uh, Charlotte says, are you going to go back to Nashville to visit Kathy? I may, I think if I go back to Nashville now that I know Kathy a bit better and we do chat, we text every, uh, once in a while. Um, if I do, uh, see Kathy again, I'll probably maybe see if she wants to do a video and go hang out, like go to some antique stores or just go, uh, go see the sites in Nashville if, she, if she's up for it. And I don't know if she'll even see this live stream, but it'd be nice to just hang out and do something fun with her rather than just hang out and, uh ask her questions about her dad. I imagine when you have a very famous parent, it probably kind of gets very tired after a while of answering questions about somebody else. Um, and I don't do that to her. She's an interesting and lovely lady all on her own. Um, and I quite enjoy her company. She's just a very nice and decent person. Um, so I don't want it to be about like, and tell me another thing about your dad, you know? Sure, everybody, who doesn't like Johnny Cash? I mean, whether you're rock and roll or country, I mean, what a, what a gift to the music world he was. Um, but I'd, I'd rather just kind of hang out with her and just do some fun stuff. Plus her and my sister Heather got along really well. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, and my sister Heather's gonna come visit me in Canada pretty soon. I'm looking forward to that. I think she's gonna be here for her birthday. She's flying in on her birthday. So we're gonna do something special for her birthday. Take her around town. She's not been to our mountains. She's not been to our mountains here in Canada. Uh, although she lives in mountains in Colorado. Um, there are some beautiful sites here in the Rocky Mountains in Canada. If you've ever had an opportunity to explore Jasper or Banff, um, Moline Canyon is probably one of my favorite places to go, um, which is in Jasper. And uh, it's a not, it's two and a half, three hour drive for me to get there. It's not terrible. Uh, and you're in this beautiful picturesque park-like setting with glacial lakes and trees and streams and waterfalls. It's just absolutely beautiful. So I do want to take her there so she can see it. Um, the mountains by Colorado Springs are, are picturesque, but there's not so much in the way of waterfalls and, um, and lakes and stuff in amongst them like we have here. So yeah, I'd like to take her on a little bit of a road trip when she comes down next if the weather's good. Um, oh, am I doing any more additions to my suitcase train? I sent you pictures of mine. Oh, I didn't see those pictures. I must have missed them. Um, no, I am, uh, I am uh, just leaving the suitcase train until next Christmas. <laughs> Uh, what do I think of a 53 Buick Roadmaster four-door? Bought one, ordered on the other day. Uh, bought one, ordered on the day of my birth and the dealership was around the corner from where I was born. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, so a 53 Buick is a very pretty car. Um, my favorite 53 Buick would be the, um, the Skylark convertible. Very, very nice vehicle. But my favorite Buicks would be the 567 Buicks, 55, 56, 57 Buicks. Um, they're really nice. I think Harvey Earl designed them. Really nice looking vehicle. Uh, like them a lot better than the 567 Chevys or Olds. Uh, the Buicks have always been my favorites. Uh, which cars will you be taking to the car show this year? Any that I have left over. <laughs> I don't know what's going to be left. I'm starting to sell off of things. Allison Pilcher sent, sent us a super chat. Thank you so much, Allison. And nice to see you. Oh, and thanks for resending the pictures of the suitcase train too. I'll be curious to see what yours look like. Oh, you call her the tank. Yeah, 53 Buick is a big car. Um, there's been some conjecture about whether gas-powered cars are going to go the way of the Dodo or whether it's going to be electric. And I'll be honest with you. Here's my thoughts on the whole electric thing. The electric car is fine. It's actually a pretty decent vehicle. I don't mind driving it. We have a Tesla Model 3, which is kind of my daily vehicle. It's fine. It does car stuff. Um, we haven't had any issues with the loss of battery in winter, mainly because it's parked indoors here, I would imagine. Uh, but there are challenges with if you want to go to a smaller town that doesn't have good access to charging stations, it makes it a little bit more difficult. That infrastructure is good if you're going along a major highway, but it's just not really built up enough for them to be practical for people in a lot of areas outside of a big metropolitan area. So um, from what I see, the sales of cars, electric cars, has been declining a little bit. 
Um, so I think gas-powered cars will be around for a while. Uh, and plus they're coming out with synthetic gasolines and things, they'll, they'll, they will find a way. Um, the fellow that bought the Alpha from me the other day, he said, you know, I, I don't really know if, uh, you know, people are gonna be buying these old cars in the future. And I said, you know, I think they will. I don't think, he said, well, I guess if they convert them to electric. And I said, no, I don't think you'll see people converting them to electric. I think that if they, um, if it comes down to it, they'll probably have some sort of synthetic gas you can use or something. I think that there will always be a way to power and drive your old car. Uh, there's just too many of them on the road. Uh, there's billions of gas powered vehicles out there. Um, uh, our city actually, um, I, I am not anti-electric. I am, this is me trying to see both sides of the fence. I have an electric car. It's fine. It does what I need to do with some limitations where if I need to go out of town, like to a Northern small town, I have to be very planful or take a different car. So there's that. But our city bought a fleet of electric buses and then the electric bus company went bankrupt and now they don't have anybody to service these things. And there's some big lawsuit where basically they have a bunch of dead ducks that they can't do anything with all these dead buses. So I think the technology will get there, but who's to say what they might go hydrogen cell, they might, they might do whatever. So I'm gonna just enjoy my life. That, that's the main thing I think is that um, the few things that I collect, I, I do have some collectibles, uh, like little Corgi Batmobiles and stuff like that, because I like them. And the cars that I have, I have because I like them. And I think the minute that you start buying things solely because it's an investment is when you're going to have um, issues with perhaps losing money or uh, making the wrong investment. I think if you like it and you're having fun with it um, and you're fairly wise about what you pay for things, why not have fun with it? And somebody just say maybe they'll have jet powered cars. <laughs> you never know. Um, would I ever leave Canada for a warmer climate? Okay. Richard asked the question, would I ever leave Canada for a warmer climate? Maybe. Um, if I was a single guy and I didn't have kids and I didn't have a wife, I probably would have left a long time ago. The challenge is that family is very important. It's not a challenge. Um, family is important to me. My mom, um, my siblings, uh, my aunts and uncles. I enjoy time with family. In fact, I feel like the true root and meaning of life is really um, those small moments you have when you're with family and you're smiling and laughing and sharing good food. I think that's what this is all about. That's what life is all about. Uh, and so I'm chasing more of that. And so to put myself in a warmer climate would mean that I would have less access to that. And so I think for those reasons, probably no, unless I can convince everybody to move with me somewhere, maybe. But I will say this, our winters haven't been terrible. And honestly, when you have winter, you appreciate the spring, you appreciate the summer more. And I think that there's, um, there's something to be said about that. If you had beautiful, sunny summer weather all the time, if you ever talk to people who live in Hawaii and ask them the last time they went swimming in the ocean was, for most people, they don't really go that often. The locals that live in these tropical climates don't do the things that tourists do. They don't go to the ocean very often, they just live their life. And uh, you know you, you can take any environment for granted. And so when you think about uh, what we have, we've got three and a half acres. Uh, and Elaine says, I lived in Hawaii. So Elaine, did you go in, in, to, in the ocean every day? Probably not. Um, I think when you have a varied environment like we have here, you, you can appreciate it. And the cost of land isn't terrible. Uh, it would be hard to afford what we have in a different environment. Um, Allison says, would love to see you team up with uh, uh, Midwest magic cleaning for dad jokes. Interesting. I haven't seen that channel. Uh, people who live in New York never go to Manhattan unless they can help it. Yeah, I've heard that before that the locals do not like to go downtown. Um, and it shows if I had lived in a city, like we have a really big shopping mall here in Edmonton, West Edmonton Mall, and we don't really go to it. There's a couple stores we don't mind going to there uh, for like clothes or something like that. But for the most part, no, um, we avoid it. And I think if our downtown had somewhat sketchy, non-licensed Mickey Mouse and Disney princesses walking around charging you for the picture with them, um, I would be a little creeped out and not want to go spend too much time downtown either. <laughs> so I get that whole Manhattan thing. Oh, my wife says that my daughter showed up and she's on her way home. So Melissa, thank you for sticking with us for so long uh, and moderating on our live chat. Um, and gosh, uh, oh, Stephanie says, would love to visit West Edmonton Mall. Yeah, it's, if you've ever been to Mall of America in Minneapolis, it's the same owners as that mall, same kind of idea, except Mall of America is stacked multiple levels and ours is spread out, so it feels much bigger. 
Um, but yeah, we are uh, just really looking forward to experiencing. I think what it's the joie de vie. It's the, the joy of life and living this year. I, I want to try new foods, meet new people, see new sites. Um, I want to do that more than I want to buy somebody's stuff out of a storage unit, if that makes sense. And I hope that I can still make some interesting content for you. And I still will do the things, like I said, this weekend we have a video coming out that's traditional Alex video, digging through an estate, looking in boxes, trying to find stuff. Um, so you're gonna see that, that I'm still doing that type of content. But um, I don't know, I, I want to explore and travel and have fun uh, and take my kids with me when I can too. Uh, so I think that it'll be an in, in, some interesting additions to the channel. But guys, uh, with my wife on her way here, I have to uh, move some stuff out of the way in the garage because I've made myself a little bit of a mess here. Um, so I'm gonna get back to it. But guys, have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for a new exciting video coming out on Saturday, more videos soon. I kind of got them uh, coming out every weekend. So four or five videos a month right now uh, while I'm off doing stuff. And um, yeah, as for me, uh, this alpha, which is remind me, is gonna get picked up on Saturday and it's gonna be off and on its way. And uh, that's one more parking space I'll have back. So guys, uh, thank you so much. If you have recommendations on things I should do or places I should see and visit, you can email me at curiosityedmonton at gmail.com. Alternately, I'm always looking for good watches like Rolexes and stuff like that, Omegas. I'm looking for uh, Redline Hot Wheels. Uh, so if you ever have things like that that you want to sell, Last time I said this, I said, if you ever have things like that, you want to get rid of, email me. I'm not asking for it for free. Somebody said, now you're begging for stuff. No, I'm going to buy your things. I'm going to try to be fair with my price, leave a little bit of room, of course, but uh, I'm still actively buying stuff. So if you have interesting things that you're selling, uh, cool artifacts, um, even neat old cars or something, or motorcycles, drop me a line, curiosityedmonton at gmail.com. Uh, so guys, we'll see you all soon. I hope you have a fantastic day and stay warm. It's snowing here. I'm going to go shovel and get some stuff moved out of the way of the garage for Melissa. So have a wonderful day, guys. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now. Bye, everybody. <laughs>